Right. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're coming at you from the past, but blast from the past. Right now, uh, we're this is actually one of the few pre-recorded but live broadcast. Um, so not that doesn't work. But anyway, welcome to my little town on Jolt Radio. However and whenever you're hearing it, uh, this is episode six, and we're sitting down with James Eccles from a number of organizations and things, and you've definitely seen him out at events. Uh, if you're you're in any way geographically involved in the Miami or Broward art scene, I would say, probably. At some point, you've crossed paths. (laughs) Probably. Uh, So James Eccles, uh, primarily known for Life is Art and Soul of Miami, I would say, are the two probably Mm -hmm. most commonly associated names. Um, And you're also usually seen with your better half, with Annette. With Annette, yeah. So wait, you guys have the same birthday? What is it? uh, Two days off. Hers is the fifth and mine is the seventh. Busy. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't have to worry about uh, forgetting her birthday or anything. Right. Yeah. Um, Thank you for good. having me. No, thanks for coming by. Happy yeah. to have you. <laughs> it's good. Good this worked out. Yeah. Uh, I'm heading out of the country, so we had to uh, pre-record this as opposed to our usual live uh, taping. And I feel like it's good. It's it's a good guest to have on a less stressful and like because we go back. You know, oh, ways, years. So yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, we've done so much work together. Oddly appropriate in the moment. <laughs> I didn't think about right. it so much. You yeah. Know, leading up, but. Um, but yeah, I wanted to bring you on because, you know, the show's called My Little Town. Um, Is that hashtag My Little Town? Sure. Why not? Yeah, we were talking about that before. <laughs> right. Um, but, Is that good? Uh, what? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did sound a little low before, but I think yeah. it's good. I think just turn the headsets down because we were complaining a lot of that. <laughs> um, shout out to John behind the, behind the, the dials and files and uh, tweeters and, yeah, here we go. All right, now uh, I can say the dirty words. <laughs> I oh, know, there's no like FCC. Yeah, that's why I did it online, I think. No, it's also because no one offered me a spot on like an FM station or anything. But, um, they never will now. I, well, you know, serious. I feel like they curse on that. Yeah, do they? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but then, see, I would still be true to my roots and still broadcast. Because, like, uh, Joel, like, they broadcast, like, nationally right. syndicated, whatever, like, Democracy Now!, I think, is, like, one of the bigger ones. Um, yeah. Shows. So I guess, you know, you could, you could have it both ways. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, like I was saying, My Little Town, uh, the name was inspired and derived from the uh, the Paul Simon song, actually, um, which oh, nice. I love the song and then the kind of the application of that name for a podcast because it's the idea of making this really big, you know, monster thing. It's like, oh, it's My Little Town, like it's Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, you know? Right. Um, and I feel like that is kind of what Miami is, is a mix of those things. Yeah, and I, I feel like um, a lot of people say that kind of, you can you can think of Miami as kind of the biggest small town or smallest big town. It really does. Whichever one Reno doesn't already have trade. Exactly, and, it, and because it, even though there's three and a half million people in the county, I think seven million people in the tri county area, a lot of times, you know, you do you run into the same people a lot, um, and um, uh, it does feel much more like a small town than a than a like a metropolis like uh, Chicago or something. Yeah, which uh, yeah, I've never been to Chicago. Well, it's got that it's got that feeling of like if you run into yeah, somebody you know you're like hey you know how you doing right. it's very it's very kind of congenial like that like a small town would be whereas right. you don't feel as disconnected as you do sometimes in other big cities right and I think it is because of this kind of uh, segmentation that Miami has in the sense that yeah. it's it's you know it's Miami Dade County and everyone's Miami three hundred five till I die right. but it's also Hialeah Opelika Liberty City Overtown Little Haiti Brickell right. Laventura yeah. blah 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 yeah. So there's a lot of, uh, yeah, there's a, well, it, I, and also it's, communities within right, the meaning, like the artist community, which right. is one thing that kind of spans. Right, and no matter where there's forms. an art show, kind of all the same artist friends and family show up and stuff yeah. like that. And like communities within the artist community of like the street art guys. And right. The ones that are both half in, half out with graffiti right. and street art. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Funny. So yeah, my little town. So the thing is, as I, um, as I went back uh, and dove more into the lyrics of the song and not just like oh I like that song um, I realized that it's actually a pretty depressing song about you know Paul Simon getting out of his hometown oh, no. and like, <laughs> right and you know everything you know is black and you know there's an uh, element of like religious like overtones like kind of weighing on him and whatever right. like God used to lean upon me as I pledged allegiance to the wall you know um, so I was like, oh, that's not that's not the <laughs> message that I'm trying to send with my show right. um, but I will say that I feel like it still works in the sense that I think that there is that perception of Miami. Yeah. Is that it is that 
town that you know Paul Simon is singing about, but that what we're trying to do, and in part what I'm trying to do with this show, is to you know keep that feeling. Well, change. Well, <laughs> well, keep the keep, keep the feeling, keep the feeling of as no right. But I'm saying, in other words, the opposite of the perception that is oh, this yeah. dark, you know, one you know black and white town that right. uh, that doesn't nurture creativity right. and talent and right. you know the idea that Paul Simon you know, of all people felt undervalued underappreciated unseen right. in his hometown yeah I feel like Miami is the opposite it, it's a dichotomy in that it you know it both is that and isn't when you look at things like Basil and how right. much that you know that uh, benefits people from the outside and right. but that also you know there's the groups that look out for their own and our own and Right. You know, we're like, oh no, we we're showcasing Miami talent. Right. In general, or right. South Florida. Like, yeah. like Mr. James Eccles said, <laughs> I think if there's an award for the longest <laughs> the introduction longest intro? <laughs> that actually naturally segues into an introduction of their guest, I'm gonna put that out there. All right. Someone yeah. in the PR or like marketing. Right. right. There's a lot of different award shows. I'm sure one. <laughs> Somebody will there. pick it up. Emily, uh, go ahead and submit that. <laughs> Which I will. Emily Toffel. Okay. She knows who she is. Yeah. <laughs> so let's dive in. Um, so I met you uh, back at, I like to call it the salad days. I looked up that expression and its origin because... We call it what? The salad days. We call it... The... I call it that. I don't know. I have never heard that. So what, tell me what it is. I heard that, um, credit where credit is due, Californication, the show with um, okay. David Duchovny. Uh they use it there. I've read it in books also, and like, uh, you know, kind of. I've never heard that. What is the term? So mean? it refers to, and I got the sense of it, but I wanted to look it up and look at the origin. It refers to like the kind of the rookie years, or like, if you think about, you know, authors, uh, yeah. the days where they were like, you know, going out and doing the experiences that gave them the material that they wrote right. about when they were first writing their first. Why novels. is it called the? What is so it? why is it called the Salad Days? Because it originated in Shakespeare. Uh, with Cleopatra and okay. her uh, romance affair, whatever, with um, Julius Caesar. And she refers to it as her salad days, the days when she was like falling in love with him because it was green like a salad. And so she made green choices, like young rookie oh, choices. Oh, right, right. Like, like Greenhorn, like, right. Like you don't right. know what you're doing. Like a rookie. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Which Greenhorn is an equally obscure and old it, really? reference, I'm going to say. Okay. I'm not. Right. I guess it depends on where you're As from. As a thirty-something, I'm gonna. I'm gonna Greenhorn say is that. pretty common. Where I'm from. I've heard it, but I read a lot of old books. <laughs> you're right. books and stuff. That's true. So I do. Um, before I we do dive in, actually, shout out to Jay Wakefield, our sponsors for uh, you know always hooking it up and being the last independently owned and uh, operated craft brewery in nice. Hollywood. Um, and uh, where are they located? Yeah. So they're on 24th between Northwest 2nd and North Miami. And uh, actually, if you haven't already, check out on their website. Um, Wake Fest is coming up. Their annual um, beer festival happens at oh, Anna nice. in the parking lot. Um, oh, wow. Happening February 2nd. So coming up. Uh, Sweet. Right around the corner. I highly nice. recommend it. Breweries from all over the world come and uh, get to try the beer. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. So back to the salad days. <laughs> um, I like this. So... So I met you, it was, it must have been 2009, 2010, I'm going to say, maybe Something more like 2010. Yeah. Uh, and it was actually because my girlfriend at the time, now wife, Lori. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. Was that was one of our shows? Well, she was at work at one first of, show, right? Was she at the first show? March 2000? Uh, so I remember going, I think she had done something with you that was like at, maybe was it at the Falls or it was at a far kind of oh, outdoor mall. It oh, might have been yep. we did, we did something. We did something at... Um, Fort Lauderdale, the mall up in Fort Lauderdale one time. Uh, well, oh, Boca. Maybe she was at the Boca show. Maybe. Yeah, because we did something up there. Too. I just remember you had the we work displayed outside, yep, and that, that was, was one of those retail shops. Yeah, that, um, was, that was the Boca show. So there was that, which I think she had work at, mm -hmm. and then uh, I know I went with her to the one that you had in South Beach. It was at, it was next to a dry cleaners, or now is a dry cleaners. Oh, that was uh, uh, Bar 721. Of yes. Yeah. Bar 721. Yeah, they were cool. Where I won they, a raffle that I, I don't usually like, you yeah. know, get raffles or right. win raffles. And uh, it was like a bottle. And I think I, I don't even know if I went back and got that free bottle. But <laughs> I think I, I might have. I don't know. But they were, they were good people. I don't, okay. So I don't, I thought that we met 
before we I thought that you and I met before I realized that you and Lori were together it's possible or maybe like there might have been some overlap like maybe I went to an event of your right or a week where we showed there's the same a lot of intermingling yeah. in, especially in those yeah. days especially in those days yeah it was a smaller smaller uh it was Small crazy town. I was uh, just talking to another friend of mine I mean that that was about 10 years ago and um I really I feel like that that period about so like 12 to 8 years ago there was a lot of just crazy activity tons of startups in both the art world the nonprofit world there were a lot of people that that at, uh, right about the same time came to the same real, realization you and I did that, that something needed to be done to make Miami better and I mean you still see more and more uh, uh, organizations coming together can you hear me yeah, yep. yeah. okay no, so yeah. I, you see you see more and more organizations coming together but back then it was really I mean it was only a decade ago but it was really very much kind of like okay we're just gonna do this right. like people were just like I'm just gonna do this and then they you know now it seems to be a little bit more even the even the younger crew who are putting things together and making their own businesses organizations they seem to be more I don't know they seem to be more organized than we were a decade ago because we were everybody was just like all right we're just doing something we're very energetic would you maybe say uh, or would you agree with the statement that they maybe are more organized or have a leg up because they had an 100%. example. <laughs> yeah, no, I, right. And like what, 80? Like, like I, I mean, you right. are a big example. We were there, those, yeah. I mean, I think that probably of those, of those, of our cohorts who started between eight and 12 years cohorts. ago. Cohorts. I like uh, that. I like cohorts. cohorts. I, like that. Um, I would say 80 to 90% of them are gone or, or more. I mean, you and I talk about it all the time, like okay. came and went, came and went, came and went. And there's been so many in between. But I do feel like now there's, uh, and some of the leadership, some of the, you know, the the people in the upper ups and the ivory towers have also started to recognize that they need to do more to help. I was so looking forward to this interview because like, I get to talk <laughs> so, so much. About <laughs> they, they they need to help, uh, you know, these startups. So whether they're whether they're, uh, you know, small businesses uh, or or nonprofits or art galleries or whatever, um, I think that that those of us who started a decade ago there was really a i mean there was really an, an energy that was crazy back then I, I didn't i guess i didn't realize it until probably a year or two ago how insane that was there was so much stuff going on and um you know so you know we run soul of miami <clears throat> which is a for those who don't know it's community calendar online dot org and um so we track our we track our traffic. So we really can track the traffic of like the lifeblood, the, the, the blood of Miami and, and what's going on and how, how many people are really looking for stuff to do. And our biggest year in terms of traffic on our website was two thousand eleven. Wow. It was huge. It was yeah. and then it and then it just, you know, started falling off. Um, we got less submissions over the years. I mean, we still do. Well, isn't that just a byproduct of the fact that there's now more, more the pie is getting divided into more slices. So they, 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 the people eating there's people or... that have, yeah, there's organiz there's companies that come, come and gone to kind of do the same thing. Um, there aren't that many, I think a lot of it, I think some of the traffic was probably taken by Facebook as, a, as they've kind of, uh, right, adopted more. Facebook and Eventbrite as they've upgraded their event. Uh, kind of like uh, listings and things mm -hmm. like that, and as they've you know become more in the public more, awareness, right, right, more like, used. Oh, yeah, ten years ago, hardly anybody was on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. so um, I think that's true as well. But uh, we j we just don't see you know we still go out a lot, and we just don't see the same kind of kind of manicness almost that was that was there. Right, years excitement. Ago. Yeah, um, kind of kind of crazy excitement though you know people were just like really genuine excitement <laughs> okay we'll I say that not, yeah. not excitement for the gram <laughs> not not, um, not alcohol i mean alcohol fuel was excitement. alcohol fuel yeah. alcohol fuel but um it was uh it was more uh you know it's like uh, it's the the age old you know like oh back in the day when it was well, like it's funny you know, too I, because it was and... really like i mean it was like it was like miami's miami was turning 21 you know when when you turn 21 and you you start to go out, you're just you're crazy. You go out right. all the time, you know, and and uh, you have this crazy manic energy that even at 25, you might not have, even though you're still young and energetic. Are you talking, you're talking metaphorically about the city, right? Or are you metaphorically about, about the, the city, right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> metaphorically, totally. I was like, even I wasn't 21. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, I was way not 21. Yeah. But yeah, but the city was like, it was just like, 
right. all of a sudden it kind of exploded into the, the beginnings of maturity and finding its own place amongst exactly. its older siblings in New York and Los Angeles, Los Angeles <laughs> and Chicago. Stuff like that. No, I, I think that's a great analogy. Yeah. And do you, that, so going along with that, I also um, coming back to what we're talking about in the sense of today versus then, mm -hmm. I think that there was a lot of awareness brought to the projects that we and other people mm -hmm. uh, like us were doing or have been doing, let's say, since around that time, 2009, mm -hmm. I throw in there like primary projects mm -hmm. and what they were doing in Wynwood, um, you know, Wynwood Walls, obviously, that I think was obviously like influenced in right. from that. Um, Miami Thinkers, there's a few others. Miami Thinkers, definitely yeah. Carrie and the, uh, the sisters. Um, sorry, Heather and Sarah. I'm not good with names. I'm terrible uh, with names. <laughs> um, we love you. But, <laughs> but, you know, like everyone, you know, I feel like everyone knows who they right. were like that, that were yeah. at that time. And, you know, Miami New Times, I feel like, was a big uh, proponent in terms of spotlighting oh, um, a lot of what was happening in that segment when other uh, publications weren't. There were definitely a lot of hyper-local blogs, um, you guys, I would include yeah. in that, and, um, you know, Sweat oh, Records. There, there were tons, letters, yeah. A lot that aren't still around That today, aren't still around, um, yeah. But, you know, I feel like that contributed in a way to the more... the institutionalized no, it, entities it, it, like you it know, 100 like percent what Miami we have Foundation today and yeah. all that being like oh this is happening those, and those no those those street organizations those grassroots people who were doing stuff you're you and all the guys who were you know in Winwood, everything like that um definitely I, I mean definitely defined what the structure is today I, because I think that a lot of the leadership and the structure, a lot of the, the, the uh, like I said, the ivory towers, they they picked up on that eventually. Well, and it takes a while. It's it long, does. It's a yeah, sure, it takes a while to, to percolate. Um, but <laughs> not just to see, you know. Yeah, from yeah. But it, but but they saw that kind of thing, and I mean, it took them. Like I said, it, like you said, it took them a while. But um, they a, a lot of that. This, you know, even the city and the and the county and. And you see, like, oh, they're the, just coming around. Yeah, now. but you see, like, the tourist organization. Now they're all kind of like the people who are in charge, more or less, um, are really like they're following the lead that we were doing ten years ago. They're doing it now. Right. And um, so, but, and they wouldn't be doing that if, if it wasn't for <laughs> all those crazy kids ten years ago doing it. You know. So I think that, and I, and I'm not, and I'm not, I don't want to detract from what from the work that the the younger crew is doing right now because I think they're all doing great work as well. It's just, it's a whole different Sometimes. feeling. Well, right. Well, just like, like always. Just right? like back then, some of us were doing really bad right. work, too. I used to say we're obviously biased. <laughs> right. Like, oh. but, um, but, yeah, I think that, I think that the, um, I don't know, man. I think that the uh, atmosphere, like you said, yeah. that the, the, the new uh, emergers are working in today is definitely different than it was when, because, like, when you and I were doing it, when we started 10 years ago, there was n no nobody no rules. I mean, you just kind of like let's just go do no it. No money and no that's no money, the, no <laughs> rules. Lots of alcohol. There was plenty that's of uh, alcoholic uh, uh, sponsors, shows. but yeah, but there there was just like you could go to anybody and say, hey, can we do something at your place? Oh yeah, let's do it. You know, right. and now it's a lot more people. You know, there's been some burnout. Um, I know that that. Uh, the brands and stuff have gotten, you know, they got plenty burned. I mean, when there's no rules, there's a lot of there's a lot of nonsense mm -hmm. and so, shenanigans. Shenanigans, yeah, and, and and just people taking advantage of the situation or people who really, really just shouldn't be doing what they're doing, but they have the opportunity to try because you know because they, there's no rules. There's because no because they there's no barrier to entry. They get in a room with the right people mm -hmm. and they present themselves in the right, right. way. There was no skepticism back then. I guess is what I'm trying right. to say. And so, if you went to somebody and said, "I want to do this insane thing," they're like, "Oh yeah, let's do it." You know, nowadays, if you go to say, "I want to do this insane thing," it's a little bit more like, "Well, let's talk about it. Let's get let's some talk plans. about the let's, engagement right, and the reach." Right, and right, 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 right. How are you going <laughs> to how are you going to measure the impact and right. yada yada? Which I think is, I mean, I think in in many ways it's good right. because it does kind of uh, help make sure that mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of the nonsense going on. But then sometimes you need nonsense because out of the nonsense sometimes comes great ideas you know right. if you're if you're too structured you 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 um, you push down ideas but if you're if you're not structured enough then uh, you just get a lot of wasted right. time and money which i feel like 
uh, like you said, I think it is it is a good thing um, in the sense that for those of us who are confident in our abilities to prove ourselves or right. are confident in our abilities and willing to prove ourselves. Right. Because that's two things that, you know, you, you have to be humble to be able to say, yeah, I'll show you that I could do what I right. say I could do because I know I could do it. Yeah. Uh, and then people are like, how dare you ask me? You ask me, <laughs> have you not looked up what I've done? Like, right. And there are, there are people like that. Right. And there are people like that. And uh, I do feel like that is what today still allows me to grow, you know, my business with Yo Miami. Yeah. When as I, you know, meet new people and potential potential clients. Now you have a track record. Relationships. I have a track record, yeah. but I'm still willing to say, look, look, this is the first time that we're doing something together. Right. We could take it slow. Like we'll try, right. we'll try this out. Yeah. We'll try that out, and then adapt. And I know enough about what I'm doing to know that it's a process, and that right. you're never going to hit the nail on the head the first right. time. Yeah. Perfectly, it's you know you're going to have to adjust. I think I think uh, I think the frustration level does come down with experience. Mm. Because you do, you get to like for me, you know, it was a, I, I, it's been a problem, um, but you finally get to the point, like you said, where uh, you know, I mean, you got to learn how to roll with the punches, right. right? Until you roll, until you learn that, you're just getting punched, right? And once you learn it, then you can go, okay, so let's see, this this didn't actually work. Let's you know, kind of modify it. Um, so yeah, I, I I I agree with what you're saying there. And then do you think with that, or I mean, I found, I guess, that with that comes a little bit like an extra layer of, of the cynicism or of the, uh, it's hard, the, it's hard to tell if I've gotten any more cynical than I ever was. Well, I would say the, the <laughs> barriers to entry. I, I think, yeah, no, I agree. Um, <laughs> like I, I'm much more yes. likely today to answer someone that's, you know, right. cold, cold calling version, yeah, cold emailing, emailing me, yeah. you know, send me a. A right. description that shows me that you've thought this out beyond just pitching me yeah. the idea. Yeah, And absolutely. maybe we can meet and in I, person. And I think that's, I think rather than calling that cynicism, we call that healthy skepticism. Okay. Um, if we want to look at it in a positive right. light, which I know I don't normally don't do. But right. um, yeah, but I, and I think, and I think that, I think that's really a uh, defining term now of a lot of things. Like I was saying, when we started, there was no healthy skepticism at all. And so you could go, to you know, some liquor dealer and say, I want to throw a show. Can you donate donate me some liquor? I mean, uh, I I have been drinking rum that I was gifted <laughs> literally eight years ago <laughs> because they gave us so much liquor for this one particular. Right. Don't say which company they. I'm, I'm not. At your door. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even think they're. Uh, I don't think they're in business anymore. But they gave us so much rum for this one uh, party that we did like eight years ago that. I think you gave me a bottle. <laughs> I, I probably. It's been like gifted for yeah. everybody for years. I remember. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, people were like, literally, we were doing a show for like a few hundred people, and they show up with like ten cases, right, of of, of, of rum, not not right. beer, right? right? So it was crazy. So, but nowadays, that you, you know, I think I think overall, which does make it a little harder, well, probably a lot harder to break in, um, and that's a shame. Yes and no. Well, because these kids are learning more. They they are taking some in hits, words, but I'm glad they didn't have to take. There's more tests in place. Yeah. But the answers to the tests are also more available because of the internet. And the internet. Well, that's true, and there's and there's people who have actually been doing it now for quite a while. Not just us, but lots of right. people who now have been doing it for a decade. And um, so there's resources out there that were. I mean, there was nobody who knew anything about doing anything when we started. And right. I don't mean that bad way. I mean right. like that was the beginning. Maybe I mean I could say that that maybe 15 years ago was when it really started to to kick off, but not. Not before, not in terms of the cultural scene, not in terms of the arts. Right. Scene. In other words, you had like the what is it, Beaux Arts, uh, the yeah. Beaux Arts uh, thing right. in Coral Gate or the Coconut Grove Art Festival. Yeah. Or like, yeah. You know, well, and there was yeah, there was some big stuff Miami like that. Yeah, the Coconut Grove Art Festival was going on forever. The Art Miami has been going on forever. But, but it in, was in terms of grassroots, right? Arts uh, projects, those really didn't take off until maybe. As as early as fifteen years ago, but but even then, it was very we'll stretch it to like the nineties. Yeah, okay. Because there was like some like there was the Dade County, but it, the it, public it, art in public places thing. That's not so grassroots, the, though. That's I mean, yeah, you but know, where they did they fund like? Well, oh yeah, yeah, local artists, yeah, for sure, hundred percent. But uh, I mean, in terms of of kind of the grassroots organizing that you see so much of now, right? Uh, it, that that just recently, you know, and it's funny because I hadn't started, I didn't really think of, thought about this at all. Like the like the the progress uh, until just recently, I was talking to somebody 
a few people and, and I started to realize like, yeah, we've been doing this 10 years, you right. know? And other people have been doing it for 12, 15, but right. not much, not in terms of local grassroots kind of organizing. I mean, you had things like, you did have things like the Coral Gables Art Walk, which uh, used to be quite good. But even at that, those were, those were fairly well healed galleries that were putting that together. Right, right. It was you know. more, you know, yeah, it was like uh, it was an art institutionalized, and, right. you know, thing. Yeah. It was a, it was a, and they like were a mature trade people show. who kind of knew what they were doing. Yeah. They, they were not, you know, just like. Right. And even those, I feel like, have now started opening their eyes a little bit. Absolutely. And, and, uh, yeah. Welcoming kind of the newer. Mm -hmm. elements of the art world in terms of whether it be street art or just more you know conceptual conceptual yeah uh, contemporary conceptual. young emerging artists yeah for sure i yeah i definitely think that's that's changed a lot as well all right well um that was a nice uh <laughs> right, yeah did the memory lane yeah right <laughs> we're old like, uh, 8, 8, uh, 826 um oh, so i want to talk about that slow <laughs> <laughs> right, all right, well, 95 on a medium day. There you go. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about about specifically your contributions to the my the that oh, no, art scene that. that called. Well, I just want to touch on something. Okay, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta to give the people what they want. Um, so what they want is for me to talk bad about people. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, that we'll, we can we'll put that there. in. That's like right, whatever the meme guy. We'll um, so we'll two more drinks. <laughs> so. Back in those days, like we were saying, you guys were doing a lot of like pop-up shows, yeah. um, showcasing emerging artists uh, under, I would say, I would call them like very favor favorable or reasonable conditions <laughs> in the sense that it's not like you were extorting. Because, you know, around, right. I wouldn't say around that time, but maybe a few years later, there was like that raw whatever thing that, I mean, oh, no, there was it, like it, five raws, so not one, to confuse or they make one of, people. One of, the, uh, one of the reasons that we started the organization was that even at that time, um, we knew that there were a lot of people that were doing a variety of things with local artists um, and were taking advantage of them. We, we had stories all the time of um, uh, a friend of ours did a show at a, at a local drinkery, which is long since not in business, and um, a lot of his art got ruined. Uh, another guy did a show at a local restaurant, which is still in business, and they were not paying him his percentage when they mm -hmm. sold a piece. Oh, wow. And eventually he had to just, and this was, this was before we started, he, eventually he just, he literally had to go pick up the art himself. And it was big art. So, um, because they were just ripping him off completely. You know, there were all these different stories of, of artists getting ripped off all the time. And so that was, it was a big issue. That was one of the things that we started the organization for so that we could run shows um, where, you know, we weren't taking advantage of the arts. Of course, we were, we were stupid. We didn't know right. what we were doing. I mean, we knew we knew how to run a show. I don't know. I've been running shows since I was a kid. But, um, uh, and we knew how to market. We knew how to get people there. We always had a good crowd. But in terms of uh, paying our own bills, we were stupid. Like, we didn't understand the economics of the situation at all. Well, in terms... Which was good, probably. And I think that's, that's what I was going to yeah. touch on, is I feel like a lot of the people who are still around or... Maybe not a lot because they, they didn't make it for that same reason. Right. Um, but, you know, like me, for example, I started, I had a very secure, you know, right. like fortunate, uh, you know, I was working in a family business and, sure. and whatever. Um, you know, I know both you and Annette had like day jobs at the time. Uh, right. You know, initially yeah. when you started, which when we I started, want to yeah. talk about, yeah. you, know, not, you know, then make, you know, jumping the shark <laughs> and, and what that's like afterwards. But, um, on the shark thing. I think that's the thing is it came more out of a place of passion and of right. like you said seeing a need for something that wasn't there and being the type of people who are like well that's not there and I right. want to see it like let's all right I'll make it happen um, and I think that's the good and bad of it is you do treat you, you treat it a little bit more lax in the sense of you're not right you're not as maybe hard fisted what's the Hard right. nosed, uh, hard nosed in your negotiations right. and and in you know thinking big in terms of numbers, um, which is, which I think I think you're right. That can make things happen when you're not right. you know especially when you're starting out. You need to make some sacrifices to to get started. And I, so I think that was a yeah. I don't I don't regret that right. at all. You know I mean I'm, I'm some, some specific cases. Well <laughs> maybe. maybe um, uh, I am tired and I'm burned out, but I don't regret the fact that we were really stupid about money when we started because I think it really did 
allow us to drive to the place we are now. You know? Right, right. Um, yeah, and I think that's with it everything. It hurt a lot, but, you know. Yeah, and I think that's with is everything life. is you have to. Right. That's, you know, that's what life is, is making the decisions on when do you sacrifice and at what point are you, right? you know, do you need to change course? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we'll, we'll take that uh, to, to the question of, you know, what was for you kind of the, the realization or what got you to the point where, and I guess how long in, you know, was the point where you said, no, I'm going to do gonna, this full time. Yeah, commit to doing um, this. That's a good question. So I think that, let me see if I can, chronology is not my strong point. It was about seven or eight years in, like seven, right. I think. Like, go back from now, how many years? Are we like like from three now? years back, maybe. Right. <laughs> um, there, yeah, and we didn't, I didn't really even think of it as seven years at the time, right? right. I, I just thought it, it seemed like we had gotten to the point where, like you said, we were experienced enough, and we had enough of a, of a name recognition, um, and... We had, we had basically, we had ended up at a, at a crossroads because, and, and I think I even wrote about this a while back, because we were doing, well, I, I was going to say we were doing all we could do. We were doing way more than we could do with both of us having full-time jobs, right? And we were killing ourselves, that. you know? What? <laughs> I hear that. Yeah, right. <laughs> and we were killing ourselves. I mean, we, there, was, there was a period for um, probably six years that I literally worked 100 hours a week. And, that's, and if you guys figure that out... Basically, I got up in the morning. Um, I was I, this was my this is my daily routine. I would get up in the morning. I would sit down at the computer. I would spend a few hours updating Soul of Miami. I would then go to my regular job, which, by the way, was with Henry Stone Music, which I loved. Ah, um, so, yeah, I know you were. Yeah, so I, so I worked there for ten years, and that was great. Henry was a super smart guy. Uh, passed away not too long ago, but he was ninety three, so you know he did good. And um, it was a it was it, that was amazing to work with him, but it still it was work. Uh, and then after that, we would spend uh, a few hours going out networking, shaking hands, um, and then I would come home often having had a few or more drinks, <laughs> and I would work until 2, and then I would get up at like 7 the next day, and I would work literally, that, and then on the weekends, I would work as much as I could work, updating the website or putting together programming or, you know, whatever. So, um, and then right about the time that I had a massive breakdown, <laughs> um, we decided to start Philanthropist, which was our other organization. Um, fortunately, we had help with that. Uh, the folks over at, at Miami Crawls helped us out with that. And um, But that was literally, I had had a, 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 a massive kind of burnout uh, earlier that year. Yeah. And so um, I, I don't know what my problem was to right. say, hey, let's just do like, a third do one. <laughs> so at one point, I was literally running... Four, I was literally doing four different things. I had my job at Henry Stone, I had Soul of Miami, I had uh, Life is Art, and then I had Philanthropist. And I was making my car. I was I was making my business card when I had the. This was when I had the <laughs> like how many things? That yeah, exactly. Like. And I had like four different logos on my business card. And I'm like, this is insane. Nobody should be doing. This. I'm I'm a, I'm a you know a moron. Yeah. So. Uh, there I, should be like a an AA, like a some right, kind of group right. thing Entrepreneurs, for Entrepreneurs like, yeah. Anonymous or something. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I guess that's the video. Um, <laughs> so uh, around so somewhere around that point, after the second year of Philanthropist, I talked to my partner, and I said, "Listen, you know, I, I can't do it anymore. You got to take it over." Um, she was obviously, you know, she's like she was she was super cool about it. Um, but I just I just gave the whole organization to to her, and uh, she ran with that, which was awesome because that way there was somebody to, to follow it. Right. And then which if if people don't know, you can look it up. But Philanthropist, which was a festival specifically right. highlighting nonprofits, nonprofits, uh, yeah, festivals yeah. specific, not specifically tied to the arts. I mean, obviously all, all nonprofits, right? All nonprofits, all nonprofits, yeah. And it 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 was its own, like it was a, a completely separate organization. Excuse me, organization. So that meant that I, I, I mean, I had, I, I had both. Well, anyway, it was it was a lot, yeah. um, <laughs> and it was a little bit after that that I, I, well, so part of it was at Henry Stone Music. I was brought on for a specific task, mm -hmm. and that was to help them uh, uh, re-release <coughs> a lot of their old, a lot of the old work from Henry Stone's 
older older uh, Marlins labels and, and, and previous labels. He had, a, he had a bunch of labels. And a lot of the work had never been collected, had never been released uh, on digital. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of my job. And by that time, a few years ago, we had gotten through, I don't even remember, hundreds and maybe thousands of different uh, titles, mm -hmm. gotten them all digitized, put them up on iTunes. So what was the format that you got them in? Well, we, well, a, so most of the time, sometimes they were on CD, but a lot of time we were actually transferring directly from uh, vinyl. Uh -huh. Because, um, not many people know, but um, Henry had a, a big uh, fire at his warehouse, I think in the early 90s, mm -hmm. and it destroyed a lot of the original tapes. Uh -huh. And these were, and a lot of these were, were recordings from, the 50s, the 60s, and 70s, so right. long time ago. Yeah. And um, and they had never, there were some, we, we released, J.P. Robinson, we released a bunch of stuff that had only ever been on 45s. He had about three or four different 45s, so we took all of the all of those titles and put them on one kind of CD, but the way that we, mainly we released them on iTunes. Right. Um, and the download, the other download services, they're on all the download services. Mm -hmm. So... We were running, you know. There's that's a there's a finite supply of those, so right. we were running low. Right. And I and I was like, well, I'm, you know, I, they don't really need me so much anymore. So right. I started moving out into into doing uh, life as art uh, full time, and at the same time, I felt like, okay, we've been around long enough. Like you said, we have proved ourselves, um, and it's time. Th there were two things. It, it's really time to start doing bigger stuff. Like mm. we had been doing a lot of pop up shows. We, you know, we had seminars for artists on how to do their business. We did little uh, festival stuff here and there, um, but we really wanted to start doing some bigger stuff, which requires more money and more time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was so. That was when I finally went. Okay, it's time to you know, it's time to go. And I'm I really uh, I don't play well with others, <laughs> so uh, I loved working for Henry Stone. He was a uh, he was amazing, right. and he was, it was the right environment. For it you. was and. <laughs> Uh, he was, uh, him and his wife, who, who were my bosses, they were very patient with my uh, lack of um, ability to play well with others. Uh, he taught me so much because uh, he was apparently like this all his life. And so, but anyway, so, um, so I, but I was finally getting the urge to, like I was getting the, the need, I, I need to be out doing what I want to do, what I'm, you know, what I want to do. Right. Um, and not that I didn't like doing that. I just, right. you know. So that was that was about three years ago. That was a long answer to that short question, wasn't it? Jesus. I guess, but sometimes you know you need to, you need to go <laughs> right. on all the winding, mm -hmm. you know, the winds in the trail to to get to the, <laughs> the destination. So so it was about three years ago, and I'm going to finish that this the story because there's more to it now. That there's the last three years, right? Right. <clears throat> so at 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 one, at one point we happened to have a few thousand dollars left over at the end of the year, mm -hmm. and um, I said, you know, rather than I don't know buying myself something nice I was going to use that to bring in some consultants to help us with our growth strategy which we did and they did um, and from that we got some really good ideas on like where we wanted to go and uh, we built our board of directors out of that mm -hmm. they helped us build a board of directors um, because we did some st strategizing sessions and invited people blah, blah, blah. I think you might have been there for one or two of those I can't remember mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I definitely remember the time when you were like... Yeah, when we were doing that, yeah. Um, and so that was that was a big change for us, because up until that point, uh, the board had literally been me and Ed and one of our friends, right. Talmadge, we love you, uh -huh. um, and, and who was, you know, it was just like, which is the minimum you need to make an right. organization, is three. I've, I've since learned. Yeah, right. <laughs> but just for the people online, you don't right. know. Right, right. Um, you need three people to make a corporation, well, whether it's for or non-profit, you need three. Yeah, it's supposed to be a president, vice president, and secretary. Now, okay. you can have people take two roles. So you could have right. a vice president and secretary who's the same person. But so we had you three. need at least two. You need, so you need at least two, yeah. Okay, I, gotta look at <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's maybe they changed that. I don't know. Anyway, um, uh, so we finally got a, a, a nice uh, board of directors. And, uh, uh, and then we brought on another, after that, after we kind of got that, that got us started on thinking bigger, basically. And, and what do we really want to be doing in terms of more than just, hey, let's throw a little art 
Right. Like, you know, right. Something and, more and not, structured. And, right. Something and something that has a bigger impact than a couple of hundred people showing up for a free drink and, and some good art, right. which, by the way, we love doing. Like right. we're not going to stop. We we don't want to stop doing that. Right. But um, we just we really wanted to have some bigger ambitions and. We needed a way to kind of codify those, yeah. Mm -hmm. So after we had those, then we brought in another uh, consultant who was kind of a fundraising consultant. Mm -hmm. He's still, we're still working with him mm -hmm. um, to help us, and he helped us a lot in terms of visioning as well. Uh, and uh, so that's what we've been working on for, like, honestly, like, all, almost all of my time in the past three years has just been visioning. Right. <laughs> and just... I feel like that's something that definitely. Uh, like I can identify with in the sense yeah. that I think a lot of um, entrepreneurs or I keep saying that was literally that's the degree that, that, I got no I, 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 <laughs> that's fine uh, I, I, like, I like the word <laughs> but so you know a lot of entrepreneurs now you know why because I feel like it gets abused now and it gets uh, applied maybe. to yeah. you know yeah <laughs> um, but so you you me. <laughs> no you I mean you uh, do it, you forget you forget to think about what you're doing like you're right so you're just up, get caught, caught up doing day things day, yeah. and it's like you 100%. know it's, um, like, you know, whether, you know, now obviously there's like consultants, you go more like the professional route or right. whatever way you do it, like whether it's just, you know, you have friends that have done it or you right. know, like people that you mentor, you know, like whatever right. you can look to, to for that kind of guidance. I think that it's important for every company or entrepreneur at a certain point in their evolution to step back and say okay this is how where we are this and how the, we got there right you know what was the what, most what are we doing for the driving next force yeah. what you know what do i focus on um, right yeah uh, and i think you know i like that this is taking on a little bit of you know educational <laughs> overtones and really like, giving advice to <laughs> well and it's true um so i study entrepreneurship a lot and i have all my life um annette and i started our own business when we were 25 right out of college so uh, and I didn't, we didn't, neither of us went to college for business. I, mm -hmm. I was a, well, I was a, kind of my major was between math, physics, and dance. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. And <laughs> Very so, calculated. Right, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I know exactly what I want to do, math, <laughs> physics, and dance, yeah. Um, so, uh, but nothing, I had uh, nothing about business like that. So, right. but we just decided one day to open our own business. We had a retail store, which, by the way, don't ever open a retail store. Yeah. It's the craziest thing you'll ever do. Um, I did a summer working at one of those kiosks at Aventura Mall, and that uh, was so hard. I was like seventeen, I think. And I yeah. Like, okay. I learned so much the you hard do, way. Yeah, but you do learn, especially oh, like oh, if, if you're working I, just on commission, you learn how to sell. I was I was lucky enough when we started our company. I was lucky enough to fall in with, and this is it's funny because I, this is why I have always been all about joining, and community and uh, being together with other people because I joined uh, a professionals organization that was of the specialty retail stores that we were part of and there were people in that organization that were so smart and so much smarter than me and I learned so much about business and about the thing from them so anyway so um I forgot where I was going don't work retail <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, you can work retail don't right. own a retail store right right it's crazy um but you will, I mean, it, it is so much pass or fail. Like, it will right. murder you. Right. Uh, and I, which I, probably prepared you for, you know. Which prepared me for arts. working in the arts. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, 100%. Like, nothing you can you can do now hurts me because right. it's not near as bad as what happened back then. Right. Um, but, yeah, so, so yeah, so entrepreneur, entrepreneur I, I, I do, like, as a term, um, I feel like we are artists or entrepreneurs, you know. I, I even you have the, to be because you yeah. can't rely on any one no. facet of what you do. Right to be a consistent long-term, right. you know, means of, of income because you're dependent on other people and right. their tastes and, you know, what their attention spans. Right. And yeah. And it's, I mean, you know, it's funny because even, even as a life is art for those who don't know is a nonprofit 501c3 charity, but even there, I, I still think like an entrepreneur and it's taken, I mean, we've been around for 10 years. It's taken me 10 years to really start to understand the nonprofit world, I had to I had to join groups to start to be around other people who work in nonprofit, you know, on, on a regular basis. Um, and it it was it's been a, a, a journey, let's right. say, a journey for me <laughs> yeah. to this is a journey understand how that works differently than the for profit world. Right, so, and I think it, that yeah, it's definitely uh, a different beast, right. nonprofit. And I'm, you know, I'm only peripherally 
uh, dipping my toes into that that pool right. recently. And, right, that's true. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Yo, Miami Permanent Collection. There you um, go. Um, dot org. Trying to, yep. <laughs> well, I don't have the website yet, but yeah. Uh-oh. Uh, we'll, we'll work on that. That's I mean, right. Facebook page. Now somebody's buying it. As soon as they hear yeah. this, you better buy it before they... Uh, I could just have it as a page on you. That's true. Page. That's true. Right. Uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Efficiency. Exactly. Um, but, no, I mean, it's definitely, I would say you have to have a different mindset or you at least have to approach it very differently yeah. um, than a for-profit business. And I think that's very important for the younger people that we're talking about that are just getting into it or maybe you know, they've been involved right. for like a year or whatever um, to understand the implications and say, I'm better at this or I'm better at that and I should go on this track. You know, right. Depending. We discussed that a lot. Actually, when we started Life is Art, we discussed a lot uh, and we discussed it with a lot of different people, and this is something I encourage people to do. Fortunately, we, I mean, at the time, we already knew a lot of artists, so we talked to a bunch of different artists. Um, we talked to different people in the business, in the arts world, um, about, you know, should we open a gallery? Should should we, you know, should we be a for-profit or a non-profit? Should we, you know, whatever. And so we finally did come to the, the kind of the option that we are, we are at as a non-profit that does events, production mostly um but there was i mean it, we really did look at a lot of the different options that were available and you know you've gone a different way yeah no and that, that's what i was just thinking is it's you know i think everyone you know the whole nature nurture thing right, argument, yeah. i mean i think the nur the nature part is that we are all sh we all share the trait that we're yeah. you know driven Passionate by about, yeah. you know we're driven internally and that yeah. we don't you know we don't give up easily and right. that we're <laughs> that's for we're sure. uh What's the word resourceful and that right. we're personable like we like you know <laughs> talking to, to people and you know <laughs> sharing stories right. and ideas and whatever um but then the the nurture part is you know we all come from different backgrounds sure, we yeah. all have right. different, you have different styles that, yeah. that form us and they shape us and i think that's what you know like you said i, I came from the business world right you know, i started at 15 at a family business and yeah um and that's what led me because when I first started out like I would bring you know the books which was like probably one page at the time you know like for Yo Miami I would bring it to the the CPA that handled you know the work for for the family business right um and uh you know he he told me flat out at one he's like you know you, why don't you why don't you start a nonprofit because a lot of what you're describing like well, still you do, do would fall it seems like there's sure, some... a lot of people <laughs> but like you know my the table from... my mindset um right was well i don't want i i don't understand that That's and right. i know business like i know we had a how lot a company of works. we had a lot of arguments about that i don't know if you remember we you and i did uh, i mean not really I arguments know, but, but but let's say let's say uh heated discussions right about about the difference and i remember um how much you didn't want to do that right that's also there. yeah <laughs> yeah um it's interesting <laughs> though you know and that's why i think i'm uh We've always gotten along so well is that we can have those heated discussions and still right. It's you know, not. It doesn't, like, affect it doesn't affect our, our friendship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think that's again it's a commonality that we have is that we're like, okay, right. We're both passionate. We don't have, kind of see, the same thing. We have to see the same solution to a problem as long as we're working on solutions on the, to the problem. Right, on the solutions right. to the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because I I think that's true. I think there are different solutions to the same problem. Yes. You know. And different. Yeah. And different approaches. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know. Right. Yeah. Which I'm like I I'm hesitating to take this opportunity to take this turn in the road to uh, make the comparison to the people who find the more institutionalized paths, you know, or solutions right. to to the problem and um, the implications, the good and the bad that goes with that. Because there, you know, it's yeah. always a mixed bag. Of, they're, they're, not right. always. No, there, there are people who are. <laughs> there's some, there's sometimes it's sometimes not a mixed bag when it's just all bad. Right. And then there's sometimes um, there's some a few people who are mostly good. Um, no, maybe so, like not to so, get to uh, not to turn this too much into, you know, just well, bashing had, like okay, specific so people. I, so I had this the, discussion on on Facebook the other day. I have a lot of discussions on Facebook. Late night rants. <laughs> yeah, late night rants. This was this was actually on somebody else's uh, thing, and uh, <clears throat> my. So he made he made a comment about um, kind of that still we're still talking about the separation the inequality right especially in Miami Miami socioeconomic or what? well all of it okay. right so it's, it's it's all the same church and state so it's <laughs> no, no it's but it, well kind of I mean it's all the same in Miami whether it's socioeconomic cultural 
uh, or or uh, societal. You have pretty vast sides of the spectrum, like let's say Hispanic I mean. or like no, but that's what I mean. Is there, there there's there's this there's this massive disconnect oh, in in right. every yeah. sense of the word, whether it's social, economic, or cultural, where. Uh, um, and he had made some comment about underserved areas, and this is something that we're really looking at. And I, and I said, listen, here's the thing. Everybody talks about the underserved uh, areas of Miami and the inequality between uh, the haves and the haves-nots and stuff like that. But until the, let's see, until the people with the money start making a move on this on this problem, uh, right. on the situation, it's not going to happen. I, I, I pointed out that, it, especially in the arts world, and this, this is where I'm going to get a little pointed, in the arts world, so much of the philanthropic money, the grants, donations, um, and things like that, goes to um, the, the Biscayne Corridor, right? So you see up and down the rich Biscayne Corridor, they're getting a lot of the money. But then everybody talks about, oh my gosh, this this you know, inequality is so bad. Well, if it's so bad, you need to put money into the areas that are, and, and I've started to call them art deserts. You know, there's there's things called food deserts. Right. Now we have, I've heard, I've heard the term. Have you heard the term underbanked? I love this term. I have not. Underbanked. <laughs> like so, that there's not enough banks. Like there's not enough banks, and and the banks won't give loans to certain areas of town, gotcha. so you can't start a business. Well, I know, like, uh, so my grandpa who. God bless him. Owns the warehouse and he bought it in mm -hmm. the '80s. That, oh, yeah. that that our business, you know, ran out of mm -hmm. um, for many years in Wynwood. Um, for many years, up until I would say, so we moved out. Uh, I forget, but it's like 15 or 16. Mm -hmm. um, and up until maybe a few years before that, like we couldn't get insured, like liability, property insurance, whatever. Wow. By like the big companies because they wouldn't insure properties in Winwood. In Winwood, right? It was a bad well, no, of course. Why would you? You'd be insane um, to. And so you had to go with like, right. the smaller. And companies, if you can't get so insured, then it, that's hard to get loans. It's hard to get bank right. lines of credit. All those things you need to run a business, right? Yeah. And so, so underbanked or uh, like they call it underbanked or well, un non -banked. underserved. I've heard of underserved, that. right? But there's actually a term, oh, underbanked. Right. But now I, I've, you know, and people say talk a lot about the food deserts where there's no right. in certain. Healthy. Neighbors, there's no healthy food or no decent food to be able to buy, right. and uh, but there's also uh, there's also art deserts, right? So there's areas of town, not everybody can make it downtown. Like art deserts or art deserts? Uh, just in general, like if you want, like if you want to go to a play, right? And you live in Liberty City, right? And you don't make a lot of money. Don't you, they have that new uh, theater? Do they? Sandra. Well, now. Sandra. But the, how new is that? That that just uh, opened. Brand new. Yeah, like, yeah, that's like open, like uh, barely like, so open. I'm saying, I guess yeah. uh, what I'm pointing to towards is, like, like we were saying, now that the bigger you know, ivory tower, right, you know, are starting, to, right, are starting to notice that some of that money is making its way. Some of it, but it's still. But I, mean, I think even that is happening because it's like another notch on the bedpost of like look what we did in that. Community. Right, we did <laughs> notch on the bedpost. Like in other words, they look for. It's like the communities have to fit certain check off right. certain boxes right. to make sure that it's going to show it's going right. to reflect the right thing about the organization that right. is sure and and so because yeah, i've seen that like in little haiti where oh, it's yeah. like a nonprofit well like it's like it has to be you know well certain, yeah uh, we saw it with, with the little haiti cultural center right with what well i mean you see how much money they got and then they stopped getting money right well, yeah, because wasn't it? It was the whole thing with county, state, right? Yeah, you know, well, they changed ownership or something. Well, I don't know. I mean, I think that's always an excuse. Everything's right. an excuse, right? right? You can still give money to whoever you oh, want to give money to, right? <laughs> In so, fact, that it maybe changed ownership so that they would have to be able to possibly. Stop, but you know. you you see when I mean, but but even at that, you you still see even that felt uh, inauthentic, and I, yeah. I I hate to say that, and I'm probably gonna get pilloried for it. But every time we went, it was fun. I loved, right. I loved going right to the right. to the big whatever the Friday night the, thing they always did, um, big yeah, night little lady, right? I loved going that. I loved the music. To, uh, I loved the food. I loved the people. Is it but, the foundation for the men on for men? Uh, it's not them anymore. I but I don't remember who was. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm sorry. So, um, <laughs> but it, but the whole thing, 
felt like like you would look around at the neighborhood and go, yeah, but where are all these people who are living four blocks away, right? And so it, it feels, to, I mean, I live in South Beach and I'm, you know, white as the day is long. I'm just right. like, you know, I, and I love that kind of cultural stuff and ethnic stuff, but if you're doing something within a neighborhood and you're not involving the neighborhood, it's not authentic. Right. And that's how I feel like a lot of that stuff that you're talking about that's getting funded right. in these underserved neighborhoods. Yeah, it's for sightseers. It's for right. it's for right. people that are coming in, not necessarily going in right. and buying it's for the you know, whatever right. at the local corner store because they're too scared to go in or right. they're just like, right. oh, I don't know what... But are you know. really, like, if you know, if you do something in Liberty City, are you really servicing right. the, 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 the people who live in Liberty right. City? So, so... What I would say, though, just with regards to the, the, you you know, the market... No, no, I'm oh, oh. keeping an eye. We got, we got like a, okay. uh, but specifically with the Caribbean marketplace, um, I have to say that. So uh, this guy, who you, I mean, you've dealt with Abe, Abraham, uh, who's Abraham amazing. has been doing, I think, like a yeah. great job of kind of getting it back. Again, he's new. In the right direction. I yeah, mean, he's only been there for a while. Maybe not as jaded yet. You know, yeah. yeah and, like, I think and, he, and he's a, I, would, I mean, he's a genius, easily. Yeah. You know, when uh, I remember when he took over the, the space downtown, uh, I can't remember the name of the space, but it was at the church. The first oh, time X, I was, what, X, okay. yeah, the first time artisan, I was in artisan lounge. Yeah. yeah. Um, the first time I went in there, which by the way, we named the first yeah. time I went in there, um, when he had taken over, I was blown away by his, you know, he, I guess he hadn't had much experience, but his curatorial, uh, ability yeah. to, to, you know, I mean, that's partly bringing in the right art and then partly putting it in the right place. Right. He, he's a natural. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Hopefully, so, you know, for me, especially being so close uh, to the to the complex over there, I'm like, it, it gives me hope, like, you know, that there's someone, right. someone with, you know, some power to, to affect change that is using it in the right way. And, doing, and, and I think know, they're, I think they're doing it. And I mean, I, I, for that, but the, again, that's new. Like when I'm, when I was going to, before the, the marketplace opened, right. when I was going to uh, the events at, at the, the, cultural center i didn't you know i just didn't get the feeling that like this is the neighborhood i, right. I felt you know <clears throat> and i think that a lot of that a, a lot of that happens where um the, the 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 people with the resources for just don't see now you've got me going off on this right well that's uh, the, no, pe the people with the resources so. don't uh <laughs> communicate with the people with the with the no knowledge. in other words there's a 10 degrees of separation yeah. from the people who are on the ground and you and i spending know spending their money right you and i know to you know them who are making the decisions and guy and like you know right. telling them how directing so them this how was, to spend so that money the short version is this was a conversation i was having with with a, a friend of mine on, on facebook was <clears throat> if if the if the people who have the power are really concerned about uh, the the inequality in Miami, they need to behave differently. There, that's, that's just list like three ways specifically that they could behave. Differently. So specifically, and I've had this. Uh, okay, so specifically, uh, <laughs> listen to the people who are actually on the ground. Like, don't go with the people who are. Who have a fancy title, trendy, and, and a fancy title, and, a, uh, and are and are resume. sexy, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Find the people who are actually working in those communities on the street, who might not use all the all the uh, trendy buzzwords. Well, and who may not even <laughs> know how to fill out your freaking form, right. <laughs> whether or not they can even read or write. I don't right. care. You find out, you find the people there who, most of them can't, but I'm just saying, you you find the people who are there on the street. So, I'll give you an example. Uh, I was, we did, we did a project and, um, one of the people who we worked with was somebody who was active within the community. I'm not going to say any details, mm. but one person, and we were paying him, uh, we had gotten our money from, uh, the county and we were paying him to do some work. I, okay. So I gave you this gender. Um, and I said, send me an invoice so we can pay you. Right. And he said, I've never sent anybody an invoice. I don't know how to do that. Right. Right. Well, that didn't stop us from working with him. That right. didn't stop but us from for under someone like the county. <clears throat> well, uh, if you right. Know, we uh, you because our organization is you. yeah is is really able to yeah. deal with folks who don't have that expertise. Right? right. That's our that's our whole part of our whole mission is to be able to deal with those guys. 
um, we were able to, you know, I sent him a, a, a thing and said, just fill this out or just give me this information, I'll fill it out for you, whatever. But if you're not willing to be able to do that, to actually go find the people who are working on the ground who n know the communities and who know the people who, who live in those communities, uh, so that's one. Right. Find the people on the ground yeah. who are actually working there. Well, that's that's it. <laughs> so I mean, easy. you want you want three. So easy, people but in government. I would not say it's easy. I would say it's simple. The, right. the, the yeah, process yeah. is simple. But yeah, you um, have to the actually track is, them down. And I think it comes back to what you said about being humble, right? You have to realize that your college education is useless in these situations, right? Because you're dealing with people who don't have any sort of education. And to understand, you have all to, the time. It's not even that. Well, that's not true. Of, right, that's not true. I'm sorry. It's a, <laughs> right. It's You're more a question. I feel like of actually being willing to do like the work, which takes some effort. Right. To say it's worth taking the effort. You know, like the saying, "Measure right. twice, cut once." Yeah. Take the time to do the effort and do your due diligence. Yeah into an organization that you're working with and look at what they've actually done versus right. how many or how, what, how much or social whatever. engagement right. they had or how many right. you know like what the, the the statistics they can show you on a nice looking infographic right. or graph oh we're getting so much say, trouble oh right. my god <laughs> how dare you put down infographics no no um, um no no the, um, the, so the other thing so i i, I can think of number two now number well, two because we got a uh, well, this is going to be cut off i'm just going to I'm going to take number two, and we're just you're just going to run it long. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah. So number two matter. is uh, get your ass out of your office and go down there and actually be with the people. And you have to you have to go where you might be scared to go. But if you really want, to, I mean, and I'm talking about this is the thing you want to talk about inequality. You want to you want to say that you're doing something about inequality. You have to do these things. There is no compromise. You right. have to get out of your chair and go down and be in that community. And it may be scary. Take the guy who I just said, who, who doesn't know how to fill out a, right. a, 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 an invoice, you know, and go down with him, right. and he'll show you what, our, what all needs to be done, but you right. have to get down there. Right. And this is, I say this all the time, so I guess it's not a big deal that I'm saying it now, right. but this is what I say. It's like, get out of the, get out of the tower and, and get, get on the street. Get off your high horse and take a walk. It, it is what it is, right? You know, it is, <laughs> right, exactly. And um, we just don't, that just doesn't happen in Miami. Right. Well, hopefully with your contributions and continued uh, work and sweat and blood blah, and tears blah, and blah, blah. everything else uh, and, and the people and, and the people who you've inspired to join in the <laughs> in the fray and in the fight um, this should be fun one of them you know thanking you <laughs> in the fray and in the fight That's um yeah so warriors of love baby fun. warriors of love and let's do it again yeah um Quick shout out to where people can find all the great stuff. That okay, so the website is lifeisartfest.org. Don't forget the fest. Uh, and we're Life is Art Fest on everything else, on all the social media. And uh, Soul of Miami is our other one, soulofmiami.org, also Soul of Miami on everything. Uh, and right now we're doing a little fundraiser for Life is Art. The, the, uh, this year is our 10-year anniversary. And for the 10-year anniversary, we'd really like to do uh, the largest showcase of living South Florida artists ever produced awesome and uh, so we're doing a little fundraiser for that on on my facebook page great so you get all the, drop a dollar all the information there yep and uh as always i've been you all of here this has been my little town thank you again jay wakefield james eccles <laughs> life is art soul of miami check us out on uh instagram it's it's yo miami uh yo dash miami.com and on facebook it's just yo miami and shout out to radio bye <laughs> <laughs>